What is this? A caveman? A caveman? A caveman? A caveman? A caveman? A caveman? Well, hey, hey, a caveman! <laughs> you leave my tribe in peace. Ugh, boring. Take him. Take him away and kill him. Slowly. Ah! Idiots! Take him away at normal speed and then kill him slowly. I would have just have killed him. Double creature. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick here, and welcome to my review of the latest Aradman film, Early Man, and I almost said Ant-Man for the second time. There's a blooper that you'll see at the end when I say it by accident. I've got the poster right in front of me, but uh, the title's hidden. So, Early Man, the latest stop-motion animation film from Arden. I'm going to do an Arden rate ranking later by the way because I've seen them all thank goodness so the plot of early man is this caveman called Doug he's living in a valley uh, formed of the giant crater that crash landed on the planet uh, in Manchester instead of the Gulf of Mexico <laughs> that was a funny joke I, I had a quick mention that the jokes start as soon as the film as soon as the film starts the jokes are the jokes uh, hit off right, the, right right off the bat as soon as the film starts as it mentions uh, several million years ago around Manchester about tea time <laughs> and we see the dinosaurs some dinosaurs tr uh, attacking each other and some cavemen uh, with each other and then the rock crashes on them and not long after that's the cavemen uh, who somehow survived uh, kick around the football. Well, actually, they kick around the rock and make it and invent football, basically. And the goals and the rocks. Not very safe sport, but the meteor site that um, where the, the, the crater where the meteor crashed it, uh, created when it crashed. A few thousand years later, it becomes a valley uh, for a tribe of cavemen that features Doug along with his. Uh, pig, uh, prehistoric pig, hawk, a uh, hog thing. You know who it is? Hogworth. Hogworth. Hogworth? No, that's not right. Uh, down below, down below, I can't remember at the moment. Um, and his tribe, including a uh, chief voiced by Timothy Spall, surprisingly unrecognisable. Um, apparently Timothy Spall is the voice of the chief, and he doesn't, it doesn't sound like Timothy Spall, but maybe I haven't seen him much, I've seen him in Harry Potter and the 2008 Oliver uh, Twist TV series, but not much else. So, and Mark Williams is also, uh, one of the, uh, cave, most notable cavemen is Mark Williams as the stupid one, as in the really stupid one who has a best friend known as Mr. Rock. And tragedy comes early into the film, as af uh, a day after one of the days they're hunting a rabbit, left over from Wallace and Gromit in the Curse of the Rare Rabbit, perhaps. Next up, they'll have to do some animated slugs in the next CG one they do. Yes. As flashed away and after Christmas were done on a computer instead of the stop motion, but... Yeah, if, if they decide to do another one of those, they'll have to use some slugs left over from Flushed Away. Or elves from Arthur Christmas. Like with the rabbit here, and... Surely something from the film, the sheep, probably the... Sheep or something. Oh well, um... 
that tragedy comes early, as I was saying, because the day after, because one night they're parting after catching the rabbit, even the rabbit is pretty much having its, having its fun time before being eaten. <laughs> it doesn't, it escapes. After, as soon as the bronze uh, people with their big giant mammoths and their bronze armour come in and they squash Mr. Rock. Shocking. That was a bit shocking. They killed Mr. Rock. Okay, Mr. Rock wasn't alive, but it was a bit of a... He was trampled on, and obviously it broke Mark Williams' character's heart. But they do play the game of football in his honour later on. Well, Mark Williams is came and says it's what Mr. Rock would have wanted. Doug accidentally gets... Um, well, not captured. He accidentally ends up in the Bronze Age... A wheelbarrow wagon thingy whilst the other cavemen escape. And Hogworth. I'm going to keep saying his name wrong, aren't I? I'm going to scroll across. Oh, hang on, I'm going to look at up in a minute. Hognob. Right, the pig is called Hognob. Um, so Hognob is left behind. So And Doug goes to the Bronze Age city where Doug meets Guna. A girl who has some funny teeth. Everyone's got some funny teeth in this, but Guna in particular. Something about having some of the female characters have some strange teeth in these films, like uh, Lady Tottington in the uh, Wallace and Gromit one. But maybe it's just the intention of the characters in this film having some strange teeth being prehistoric. So Doug meets Guna, and then he ends up in the stadium and onto the secret, sorry, sacred turf in some armour to play in a football game uh, which Gen uh, Lord Noose is watching he's a big fan and he's pretty much in charge of he's apart from the Queen who's above him but he's pretty much second in command of everyone and everything and he's in charge of of mining the, the bronze and he's, he's a big football fan <sighs> out of breath and Doug accidentally gets onto the sacred turf and plays in a game of football. And then it's discovered he's a caveman. But then, but when they refuse to leave Doug and his valley alone, he challenges them to a football game. And so he has to then go back to his tribe and teach them how to play football in order to beat the Bronze Age football team uh, to save their valley. That's pretty much the... And the... Pretty much the main uh, point the story summed up is uh, in order to save their valley, the cavemen have to play a football game against the Bronze Age people, and but they haven't got a clue of how to play it, so they have to learn in order to beat them. So yeah, the film is basically about prehistoric football. Oh, it's actually more interesting than regular football, I'll give them that. I'm not really a big football fan, but it's more interesting than regular football. And they do uh, have some football-related jokes that some people would laugh at, like the "Ah, oh, my toe! They're just crying in pain about how they just hurt their toes and stuff. Uh, there was another one, I can't remember it, but it was a, it was a joke about it, about football players. Maybe because they're all demon a bit. Maybe dead demon. They, oh, they get paid a lot. They get they get paid quite a lot, a bit more than most people. Uh, I'm scratched that more than nearly everybody. Uh, probably the exception in this film would be Noose, uh, and also the fact that they're pretty much beloved by everyone, and that they look good and are a bit dim and emotional. Supposedly, meanwhile, the cavemen are basically the underdogs in the film. It's basically a sports film, a prehistoric sports film, and we're all rooting for them to succeed. But they're so terrible. <laughs> also, uh, Shaun the Sheep reference. There's a giant duck. There was a duck in Shaun the Sheep. It's used a bit uh, the film. And it, it's actually used quite a bit, the giant prehistoric duck, it's quite funny. And they eventually lose their ball, no, the, the ball 
uh, is damaged, so they have to go and get a new one. They have to sneak back into the Bronze City to get it, and Guna eventually offers her services to help them because she wants to play football and she's uh, sneaking onto the sacred pitch uh, at night to have a couple of kicks about and have a fantasy about her uh, winning the map, winning a ge game. Whilst this is going on, Hognob is giving Noose a massage. <laughs> this is funny. If Mr. Tardis Eleven's uh, review of this film hasn't come out yet, Ollie, I want you to do the sketch where Hog... I, ex I, was, I expect you do this, but please do the sketch where Hognob is rubbing Noose's back. That is a funny scene. I might do that myself as well as the opening one. Hmm, might get two for this review. Oh uh, yeah, I saw this film with Mr. Tyson 11 aka Ollie Paycheck, so shout out to him. Um So Hawknob is giving a noose a massage and also playing on the uh, harp whilst uh Doug and Guna are getting the balls. Oh yeah, there's quite a few innuendos in this film. This is the first PG rated Arden feature film. It's not the first PG Arden feature. I would say that's probably uh, Wallace and Gromit in um, Not Cursed the Rare Rabbit. That, the DVD does have it because of extras. Um, I've got the single disc U rated one though. Uh, Matter of Loaf and Death, the fourth uh, short film. There might be some others out there but I think it's Loaf and Death and this. Uh, most of their stuff is U rated. Um, in the UK, uh, there's a point later on where a certain character, played by Tom Hilson, I'm sure you know which character this is now, who says a very naughty word that is another name for poo. Don't worry, it's not the S word. It's it's a it's the C word. That that's not it's the C word referring to poo, not the C word that refers to something else. That, if said, would not get this film a PG rating, it would give it a 12A. 12 12A 12 for the cinema, 12 for non-cinema. Yeah, if a, if a certain C word was used that meant something uh, other than poo, this film would be a 12A. So, good job they didn't use that uh, particular word. The word I mean is the... Uh, is the C word that is followed by U and T. Yeah, talking about a uh, vagina. Basically, uh, oh, fuck it, cunt. That's the word. If they use that word, then the film would be a 12A. But they use crap at one point, and it's a PG, so if they said CU, etc., it would be a 12A, if it, but they said a CR, so PG. And now this review is a 12A because I said at least one use of, I said two uses of strong language, uh, including the F word and the CU word. Uh, moving on, so base, so the three have to get out of the city as soon as Noose realises what's going on, and they have several footballs. And soon Gunas trains the caveman team, but Noose, uh, in the scene where he says the CR word, uh, tells Doug about how the cavemen invented football, but then they failed. And then coming to the big day, Doug decides uh, he will sacri he will give himself up to work in the mine, which is what the cavemen would have to do if they failed the game. It lost the game, but, oh, it's raining. Um, heavily as well, right, right at the moment. Which I'm not, not out. Um, yeah, you might be able to hear it. I'm not sure you can see that. Oh my goodness, it's hailing! We can definitely see that now. No wonder it's loud.
So eventually, Doug makes a deal with Noose that uh, if they get, if they forfeit, then the cavemen can well not work in the mine. Apart from him, he would be the only one in the mine. But then the cavemen fly in to play the game, and oh, stopped. No, nope. well, it's raining. It stopped hailing. They fly in to play the game, and they play the game, and there's a cup. Basically, will there you go? The cavemen do pretty well to start with. Then the Bronze Age one, and then at half time, Noose takes the referee's position. He cheats a little bit and orders the Bronze Age people to play dirty, and they cause a lot of problems. Uh, a couple of fouls. Uh, when the cavemen do cause one, however, uh, there is a Noose does give them a foul, and the Bronze Age have to give a kick. And also, the Chief gets hurt at this point. He's in goal and he gets hurt at this point. Um, but Hognob steps in to, to save him. And the Chief almost dies, but he's okay. Uh, there's a fake out, whether, whether he's died or not. But uh, he's okay. He's really... You might get upset for a moment if you haven't seen it yet. Well, now I've just told you, you probably won't. Um, so Hognob... Is now in goal and he saves the ball and eventually they manage to the cavemen w manage to win and the queen declares them the winners and gives them back their land it was, it's not raining heavily now it's just uh, raining a little bit noose tries to run off with the money but eventually he is stopped uh, by the caveman and the giant duck and everyone gets their money back including this one woman who gets her gold plate and noose is sent down the mine <laughs> Very funny. And um, then and the cavemen and Guna go back to the valley where they live their lives in peace. And that's basically the end. And also, uh, look out for a Feathers McGuire paint, uh, cave, cave painting in the credits. And also, Nick Park voices Hognob. Mm. Nick Park obviously being the director and I believe maybe been behind the story. This was certainly an idea of his that eventually became the Crudes and now Early Man. <laughs> yeah, the, the people behind the crew is pretty much Nick, Nick Park's idea. And now we've got Nick Park's interpretation of the caveman story. In this case, Early Man. Which, uh, also, there's a point about uh, Guna makes about girls not being able to play on the football pitch. And even News then says, she can't play, she's a girl. And the Queen Ask says... A what? And then he goes, a great player. So he was about to say girl. Yet there was at least one female player on the official team. So I'm not sure what the rule about no girls allowed uh, is even included for. Because um, there's a girl on the team, on the Bronze Age team. And they don't object to the female cavemen. I think there's at least there's one or two. There's uh, certainly one. Uh, there might be two. Uh, it's mostly men, but there's certainly one, maybe two. But they didn't object to that one or those ones, uh, the cave cavewomen, being on the caveman team. So why they're worried about Guna being uh, on uh, playing football is uncertain. I think it was just there to show that Guna defies, uh, is defying belief or, or what, not religious belief, just ideology about with girls not being able to play or not being allowed to play and showing how great they are. But with the fact that there was no objections to the other girls playing, it's not really that necessary. You could just say she oh I'm she could just say, Oh I'm 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 good at it. I want to play it. But I've not been allowed on the team. Uh because they've got well they they could use any excuse to be honest. It doesn't necessarily oh, it's because I'm a girl, girls can't play apart from these exceptions. Um, so the and nobody else is pointing it on is pointing her out. So they're all calling her out on it. So uh, I think it was just there to show female uh, p power over men, not letting her allow to play it. But considering they're letting others, other girls play it. Um, maybe it's more of a maybe it should have been something like she tried out, but she wasn't very good, and she practiced, but she's still not been able to get on the team, and now. This is her chance to prove herself. That would have been better. Yeah, that would have been a better story. I'm all for female power and superiority. 
as so long as you don't do a too Ronnie sketch style female fascist regime. Because mm. uh, otherwise everything would probably go down, would probably melt down. And not because the women in charge, because it's a fascist regime. <laughs> women in charge would probably be better. Just so long as it's not fascist. In fact, so long as they're not fascists. Uh, basically, it's a bit like a Nazi regime. Um, I'm all for, for uh, female power in these films, but the excuse... Um, if, if they'd called out the other girls on being on the team, it would have made sense to have this subplot. But it was only Guna who was concerned about it, and Noose concerned about her in particular, and not the one woman on the Bronze Age team, and the one or two women on the Caveman team. I'm sure it was two, it might only have been one. But there was, there was certainly at least one. And no ex no objections to that one, and no objections to the one on the team, the Bronze Age team, so why there's objections to Guna playing? I have no idea why they're doing the excuse. Uh, in fact, her playing on the team is already female uh, power, uh, girl power. They don't need to include the, oh, girls aren't allowed to play subplot. I think that was just, that was a bit weak. That wasn't needed. I think they could have found another excuse for her not being allowed to play and then having her prove that she can do good. There is a lot of good comedy in this one. <laughs> Quite a this and you'll get a lot of laughs. However, story-wise, it's not really get good. Most of the story is concerned about football, basically, and it's just two uh, groups of people playing football competitively. In this case, one group isn't really that good at it, so they're the underdogs, and then they eventually win. Excuse me. The, the twist is that they're cavemen and Bronze Age people living in the Stone Age slash Bronze Age. And so, the, and the story is also about how the underdogs were the original Avengers about of the game, but just weren't able to beat anyone until the end of this film. And also, Lord Noose being a greedy bastard, like the Sheriff of Nottingham from Robin Hood, basically. Naturally, to be honest. Yeah, he loves, well it's not really gold, it's bronze, to be honest. He loves bronze. He loves only bronze. If you want me to sing Bronze Finger, I'll, yeah, he's basically Bronze Finger. <laughs> Might do that later. Um, the cast is pretty good. Eddie Redmayne is good as Doug, and Tom Hiddleston does a really funny turn as Noose and. Uh, Timothy Spall is fantastic as the Chief, and Mark Williams, of course, having great laughs as uh, uh, the, the dumb one. Rob Royden, I believe, is the two commentators. Uh, there's also a character who voices the, an actor who voices the referee and the uh, bronze team captain. I, it's not Tyvin Novak, I think he's a caveman. I'm going to get the cast. There's one actor I haven't mentioned yet that I do know who was in the movie. Because uh, I'm going to talk about her in a moment. But if I just talk about everybody else first. First of all, I'd just like to say that the Bronze Age people, for some reason, had a kind of a French accent, according to you, uh, Ollie. Uh, Ollie Pajak. They had kind of a strange French accent for, for some reason. So I guess the Bronze Age village was in Calais, considering it can't be too far from Manchester. Okay, who's the cast? Okay, we've got Eddie Redmayne, Tom Hilton, Maisie Williams, who is the as Gooner, who I'm going to get to in a minute. We've got Richard Ariotti as Trebor, Selena Griffins as Magma, Johnny Vegas as Asbo, Mark Williams as Barry, the dumb one, Gina Yeeshear as Gravella, not Gravella, Gravel, Simon Greenall as Emek, uh, Rob Royden's the Messenger Bird, not a not the commentators, uh, but Kaiden Novak uh, vo voices Dino, uh, the uh, ne the referee, and Miriam Morgrills as the Queen, and also Nick Parker's Hognob. Is that all? Is that all the cave people? One, two. I think Rob Royden voices uh, 
someone else as well. Now we come to Guna, who again, like Noose and the Bronze Age people, has some kind of a funny, strange accent. And he's kind of all over the place, and sometimes, or Ollie mentioned that at some points, it sounded a bit American. So I have no idea why the, the Bronze Age people were supposed to have some sort of an accent, and um, why they couldn't just do normal English, or maybe a different English accent, perhaps. Maybe they could have been the Southerners, or Scottish, or Welsh. And Doug and his cave people could have been from Manchester or from Merseyside. Well, I don't think the Bronze Age uh, town is that far from Manchester. Maybe it's Birmingham after all. But everyone talks like it's French, so I'm presuming it's Calais, the closest to Brit, the closest one to Britain at least, at the moment. Could be Dunkirk. Mmm, Dunkirk. This could tie in with Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. No, I'm kidding. But it could be anywhere, to be honest. And yet, they all sound French. Considering accents weren't even invented back then, they didn't, they, and neither was the English language, but for the purposes of this film, you wouldn't want them going, oak, 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 for, for, two, for an hour and a half. So, English, as it's a British film. But why the Bronze Age people sound French, even though they're speaking English, but with a French accent, I don't know. And but Guna in particular was a bit was the oddest. And uh, so I don't know what was going on with those characters. What was going on? Can someone explain to me why they sounded French? Or in Maisie Williams' this case, French American. Maybe she, maybe she was trying to do a Canadian the uh, French person. Maybe they're in Canada. And that's even further. So, I don't know what was going on with the voice acting, but the cast mo did a mostly good job, particularly the cavemen ones. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, one of them was very funny with the, ooh, it's pointy, and he kept being embarrassed by, well, I think there was two female cavemen, so cavewomen, and one of them was this pointy character's mum, the one who said, ooh, it's pointy. One of them was his mum, and she kept embarrassing him. It's like, ah, mum, and all that. So that was a funny joke. Um, it looks pretty good, and there's some quite a few funny jokes, but story-wise, it's not really the best that I would have done. It's a good story, no doubt, but and it's a very funny one, but it's not brilliant. So, yeah, but it still looks pretty great, and Hardman have done another great job with uh, creative, creating this film, doing a great job, and the original vision is a great vision. So, early man, there isn't that much more to talk about it, so I am going to, early man, I'm being nice and generous, I'm going to score it a 8 out of 10. Up above the birds are singing, singing just for me, no worries now upon my mind, no worries I can see. It's nowhere near the best Aardman film, but it's not a terrible movie, it's just a bit strange. Not sure what some of the actors were supposed to be doing with their accents, or what the directors were thinking about you know, why they f they should do those ones. And also, the s um, I am being a bit nice on it because of the football stuff. I'm not a football fan, not really into it, but it makes sense in the stories, and I'm at, I'm being nice and considerate. So, early man. So that's it from my review of Early Man. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Oh, that's the stuff. Sir? Huh? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Huh? 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 On Marley, it's gonna be a good day, good day. 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 Thank you.
forget to click below to subscribe to the official Nicholas Payne YouTube channel. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of the latest Aardman film and <coughs> sorry that's Ant-Man, I was supposed to say early man. I'm restarting, give me a minute. <sighs> okay. A bit better. <sighs> so what happens when you do a review some short time after eating? <coughs> you burp. <sighs> At least I have the decency to cut some cut out quite a few of them. <laughs> so. Um. Um, dog. <laughs> Where he meets uh, Nuna. Nuna? Oh Christ, I'm gonna bring the phone over. Who's been charging? Twit. Guna. No, I've just remembered the name. There's, there's one actor I am particularly aware of, no, hang on, sorry, there's one actor I, uh, forgot, um, we've got Richard Al Adiodi, Ali oh, Christ, Richard Ali, 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 oh, frick, Ali, 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 Go and check the I and DP. Don't you find a tree or berry? Messenger berry. Tiny now. Spoke by great email. Brainville. Never mind. Long review. Hang on, I'm going to start it again. What is this? A caveman? Ugh, boring. Take him away and kill him. Slowly. Ugh, idiot! No. Ugh, boring. Ugh, boring. What is this? A K 
Shade Man? Ugh. Boring. Take Take him away and kill him. Slowly. Oh, come on. When am I going to get this right? What is this now? What? A caveman? Don't crap. I would have just killed him. The dull creature. I would have just have. I would have just have. I would have just killed him. I would just have killed no. I would just have killed him. Dog creature. Better not be my sister. Too early. I would just... <laughs> you lay Oh, oh, that's the stuff. No, I have to be French. <laughs> <laughs>